Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Brian Crumby Radio Hour on Saga 960. I met a fascinating guy who wanted to talk to me about something called Kabbalah, which uh, is not a religion, um, though it sounds like it at times. Um, and it's sort of, uh, he calls it a wisdom uh, from, you know, several millennia ago, uh, from the ages. Uh, his name is David Zakin, um, and uh, he is a fascinating guy who's uh, gone uh, to uh, school um, for um, instruction in this. He's, he, he runs uh, their uh, facility here in Toronto, um, and uh, he's traveled the world, um, and he's been teaching around the world about uh, Kabbalah. Uh, Kabbalah, I think, sort of, you know, most recently has come into note because Madonna became a, uh, a person that spoke about it quite a bit. Um, and I think numerous different people have uh, suggested that it uh, has really has had an impact. I was introduced by David Zakin because someone else who's been an interviewee on my show told me that David and Kabbalah changed her life for the good. And, uh, and so, David, how are you? Welcome to our show. Oh, thank you very much for having me, Brian. I'm very happy to be here. So maybe just t tell me in your words, what is Kabbalah? Okay, so Kabbalah, it's a very ancient wisdom. It's a body of wisdom that actually giving us the blueprint of, of creation. It means what was the thought of the creation of this universe, the creation of humanity. And it's helping us really to understand the, the true purpose of life, pretty much. Uh, we all wondering if we if there is a purpose or things need to be random. Uh, the events of life sometimes uh, giving us the feeling that we have no zero control and things seems to be uh, pretty much a coincidence. Everything that happens. Uh, not necessarily connecting one event to another, childhood to adulthood, uh, to success in business. And uh, uh, Kabbalah, it's actually directing us that everything is interconnected, everything. And this interconnection is allowing us really to, uh, uh, to understand that we can have control over our lives and we can uh, direct where we want to be in our future. So you say it's a ancient wisdom. Um, you know, we've heard of the Bible, we've heard of, uh, of the Torah, we've heard of, uh, of, you know, the holy books of other religions. Where does this ancient wisdom come from? Has it been written down? So, Many, many of the religions, the way you see them right now, they're, they're nurture the wisdom uh, from other resources. And this says that one of the first resources in Kabbalistic text was the Book of Formation uh, written by Abraham the Patriarch. It uh, related to more than 4,000 years back, even before the Old Testaments. Yeah, and in that book, which was very coded and very short, only three pages long, it says that all the wisdom of life was coded in that book. And that was the first research. Uh, I've been, you know, studying the different uh, religions you know pre coming to kabbalah because i was very curious about life i had many questions of why things working the same the same way they are and and i went to you know to research myself and i saw that there are many parallels that exist within all the disciplines in the world the eastern ones uh, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, there are parallel things that have been practiced and they're all preaching for one thing. Uh, they call it love the neighbor as oneself, love right. the neighbor as yourself. Uh, it's a it's a quite of an assignment, which is we see on our daily life, it's very difficult to achieve truly to uh, to have human dignity, complete human dignity. We see so much 
collusions. We see so many conflicts all over the world. We see the conflicts that within uh, our personal relationships in the family and with our spouse and children. And we see that it's so difficult even to do it with our, with our own DNA. And Kabbalah explains that, yeah, this is the goal. The goal is really to come to that level that I, I can love someone else like I love myself. But what if I don't love myself? What I do then? So probably the main causes of chaos that we have around the world that people never learned really to love themselves, to uh, to appreciate the the divine that exists within them. Is that making sense? The divine sense? that exists within them. Explain it to me. So it says that within each and every one of us, there is a source, a, a power source that make us alive. We discussed it before. I will try to make it not super complicated. Okay. But what make things tick really? What makes the sun uh, roll and you know produce so much energy? What make us breathe? So is that just the organs that functioning? But what is the energy that cause everything really to be fueled? What is that? Where is this energy come from? And what happens when this energy depart from one thing or another, from an animal, from a, from a flower that suddenly died? Why, why does it need to decay and decompose eventually? Even us as human, we are not uh, immortal yet, isn't it? So it means that if there is some kind of energy within us uh, that make us feel alive, make us be alive, we need to understand what this source of energy, because everything is energy, bottom line, isn't it? Right. Everything runs on energy, you know? Now the EV is getting into uh, acceleration and taking over, and we see that the moment the battery is going to run out after 500, 600 miles, you have to charge it. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. You have a Porsche, you have a Tesla, it's not going to run, isn't it? So what is this uh, fuel? What is this energy that need to be constantly charged and, uh, and maintained and taken care of? This is something that we not necessarily learn in school, isn't it? No. And Kabbalah, you know, elaborate a lot about this subject, about, uh, you, you know, we call it the human soul. Right. We call it the human soul pretty much, but what is it? You know, once there was a movie that they call it the think 127 gram and they find out, they call it what it, uh, it was with Sean, uh, I forgot his name. It was the ex of Madonna, Sean Penn. Sean Penn, exactly. So it's the, they discovered that when a person is alive and just five seconds after he died, there is missing of 127 grams within him. So what what are those? What are what is this that is missing, you know, after someone deceased? So and what is? So we call it the human soul. And the human soul is, is something that we need to start looking very close towards because this is the future. What does it mean is the future? Uh, you know, once, once you have a computer room in a size of a, a warehouse that could, uh, that could process data that uh, my, my small iPhone can do these days, right. how could it be? How could, how could we remove all this material and we're able to insert the same function in such a small machine? 
So it means that everything is really about consciousness. Everything is about energy. It's not about material. And most of our life, we're looking into what is tangible. We're looking at what is obvious. We look at it what we can see with our five senses. But it's but very natural. limited data. It's but very limited that's data. We want. we want to know things are real. Yes, yes. But, you know, how many times... What you thought with your logic mind, and uh, I know that you're a very smart person, and you were sure that you write according to all your calculations and experience, and eventually you find out this is was completely wrong. You know, the way you view your life right now, I promise you, it's a bit different, and you probably are laughing on your decision making that you made 10 years ago with your experience today so what is we're, missing? We're sh laughing or shuddering i'm not sure which anyway we're, <laughs> we're chatting with, tonight with uh, david zakin who is uh, the head of uh, kabbala in toronto uh, they have a facility on young street um and uh, he's uh, been educated in kabbala he teaches it today he speaks about it and uh, we're going to learn more about it after a break stay with us Welcome back to the Brian Crumby Radio while we're on Saga 960. We're chatting tonight with David Zakin, who runs something called Kabbalah, um, Kabbalah Toronto. Uh, they have a center in, uh, in Toronto on Young Street. Uh, they have classes, they have workshops. Um, uh, he was kind enough to give me a book written by uh, uh, one of the major instructors of, uh, of Kabbalah that, uh, that motivated uh, David. And as I mentioned on the top, um, I was introduced to David by someone who uh, I had on my show, who said that, David, you changed her life. And uh, that's got to be for the good, <laughs> not for the bad. Uh, that's got to be a great uh, thing to, uh, to hear. Um, I'm going to um, ask you, if you could, to tell us a little bit about sort of the background of Kabbalah. I understand that uh, it's an ancient spiritual wisdom. Um, you said that. Uh, and it comes from something called the Zohar. What is the Zohar? Yes, so the Zohar, it's a text that was uh, written 2,000 years ago by a famous Kabbalist, where he was able really to decode the understanding of the creation, the understanding of uh, a, the evolution of humanity, the evolution of the soul. Um, and he revealed the many, many amazing secrets in, in that book, uh, talking about seven planets, seven continents. 2,000 years ago, before we had uh, uh, any kind of telescope or ability to understand uh, uh, the planets, and many, many other secrets about healing and about cholesterol. Amazing, amazing text, very wide and very deep. And it's, it was actually a commentary that decoded the Old Testament, the books of Moses, what we call really? the Torah. So it's go portion by portion and telling you that the book and the stories that coming from the Old Testaments that just a code for us really to understand our life today. It's not just an history book. So some people refer to it as Jewish mysticism. Is that fair? So it was, this wisdom was adopted by by the Jewish faith as their mysticism. But a matter of fact, it's something that is, is not practiced by most Jewish people. Many of the, of the Kabbalists themselves were, were used scholars in Judaism, but they were actually been able, uh, when you were a Kabbalist, you were a person of the world. So they communicated with kings, with presidents, with uh, influencers, with scientists all over the world. They weren't focused just on religious work. They were focused really on making the interest and the impact of humanity. Okay, uh, and you have numerous different events that uh, that go on uh, at your uh, at your facility. 
So of course we are teaching the basic and the basics are meant to actually as a as audience target for anyone that seeks to know regardless of their belief system regardless of their faith so it's pretty much open to anyone that wants to understand more about the inner meaning of life and finding a bit more purpose in life so we're giving like basic courses of course since covid everything moved online so we get a lot a lot of newcomers because uh, you know in access of a moment you can uh, actually from anywhere in the world you can connect to one of our classes and we have of course different uh, different events um and different subjects that we tap into after those basics i, would, also, I was surprised to find things on astrology tell me the yeah. connection between astrology yeah. and kabbalah you remember i referred to one book it's called the book of formation and uh that book uh which refers to abraham the patriarch the very famous abraham that uh, all the faiths actually see as as his prophet uh, he referred to in that book and he's saying that there is a very, very strong connection between us and uh, the planet in our, in, our, in our solar system. So pretty much there is a strong relation, a very strong influence that happens because, uh, because of those planets. And we call it astrology today. It says that if you're born to a certain time, uh, it's going to influence your DNA, your behavior, your blockages, and your abilities. It's very interesting. What is the prayer of a Kabbalist? So, in in any other practice, there is the what we call the pleading. Pleading, it means that, you know, uh, it's something that you really want to have, but for some reason, um, something is blocking you. It means that uh, you have a certain desire to get to your own next level. Uh, but right now, you're actually asking the cosmos for assistance, for help, for guidance. So this is what we call prayer and meditation. It's also, you know, a affirmation to understand that I'm on the right track. And it's also about actually allowing more answers to come to me and to direct me towards the direction that uh, will take me towards success or whatever you can you tell me about prosperity principles yes yeah, so prosperity it's it's not just the invention of the modern world prosperity it means blessings and when i'm doing things right in the in what we call cause and effect we we will receive a reward a reward it means that uh, you know we actually give birth to something new and that's when someone is about to open a business um, everything is connected to why is opening the business it means what is the intention in opening the business it could be that uh, you know the very shallow intention would be i want to make a living or I want to make sure that I'm going to uh, be very wealthy, wealthy in my life. That could be intention. But the strongest intention is that I want to add value to the world. And you will see that many of the successful entrepreneurs in the world, they were problem solvers, meaning that they could bring something very new to the world that so many people needed, but they didn't really think about money while they created this business. So when you look at true prosperity without side effects, it means that we, we need to understand what is the why of why we do, we're doing things. And that's how blessings can bestow and be generated in long term it's not like winning the lottery that you take the jackpot and and that's it it's something more about giving 
And true prosperity is all about giving than receiving. You understand? Yeah, and you say there's some blockages we have, spiritual blockages to uh, to prosperity? Yeah, I mean, many people are having endless attempts to make a, a strong living, a successful business, but for some reason they are blocked. And that something needs to be checked in their belief system. What is it that uh, causing them to, to be blocked in, in that way? Meaning that what type of fears, uh, what type of limitations they're putting on, on, their, on their vessels, what they are capable to do, how big they are thinking in their life. There could be many, many different blockages and things that we carry from childhood. And because uh, that's how our parents educated us. And uh, we, we have to unblock this in order to allow ourselves to receive more. It cannot, we cannot receive more unless we are removing different veils, uh, illusionary veils that we truly believe in that we are capable to do that much in our lives. Tell me about 10 luminous emanations, if you could. Yeah, so you got to one of the deepest uh, subjects that we have. Um, this is the, the journey when uh, you you getting into the fascinating world of metaphysics and that's actually uh, determining details on the creation of the universe what happened before the big bang you know you know the the scientists got up to the big bang and understood that it did happen so kabbali said yes but the question is what caused the big bang to bang Right. That's a good question, isn't it? What do you think caused the Big Bang to bang? That's, you know, it's not something that I can answer you uh, in like in uh, one or two minutes, but it was a request of humanity to create an environment when we can become co-creators, when we can do... Uh, and create ourselves. It was this world was created so we can have a playground where we can play and we can enjoy and we can co-create exactly like what we call the creator. Fascinating, and uh, I understand that uh, for some reason, um, Kabbalists think that after uh, midnight is the best time to do some research and to. Uh, into the Zohar. You mean, you mean midnight, yeah? Yes. So, yeah, it says that uh, midnight, you know, when the body is so tired and we all want to sleep during that time, it's really the best time really to invest into learning because uh, it says that all the souls that departed this universe, this is their time really to of study. So you're actually joining a huge, uh, a huge webinar together with those. And by doing so, you can actually uh, receive much more. You can be much more illuminated than doing it just by yourself. This is uh, absolutely fascinating, David. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for for sharing some of your wisdom with us. We're going to take a break and come back more with uh, David uh, Zakim in just a minute. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Brian Crumby Radio Hour, Second Night 60. I'm chatting tonight with uh, David Zakin, who is uh, the head of the Toronto uh, division of uh, the Kabbalah Center, and uh, he's an instructor in Kabbalah. And it's been fascinating. I, I, I heard about it, uh, number one, you know, I think because people talked about Madonna being a, uh, a believer in Kabbalah. And then uh, number two, a friend of mine came and told me that, David, you changed your life for the good. And, uh, and so that I had to meet you and understand more about it. And you were kind enough to give me this book uh, that was written by uh, one of uh, the people that you really uh, admire in, uh, in, in Kabbalah, I understand. And I just, I was impressed by the back of it. So let me uh, read if I could um, 
a little bit for you and then ask you to, uh, to respond to it. Scientific truths are a direct reflection of the spiritual truths that underlie all reality. You know, so many people think that science and religion are two separate worlds and two separate truths. And what you're saying is that there's one truth here. And that's interesting. One truth. You know, and then you say it. Kabbalah appears to be consistent with the Big Bang origin of the universe 14 billion years ago. It even suggests some insights into the how and why behind the Big Bang. Kabbalah is all about attaining control over the physical world, including our personal lives. At the most fundamental level of reality, it's about achieving and extending mind over matter and developing the ability to create fulfillment, joy, and happiness by controlling everything at the most basic level of existence, which again, you know, is different than so many people say, well, you know, if it is to be, it is, it will be, uh, and, you know, God's got a plan and, and, you know, um, I'm going to leave it up to God. What you're saying here is that we can control everything. And then you say in this way, Kabbalah, not you, the book says, in this way, Kabbalah predates and presages the most exciting trend in the most recent scientific and technological development, the application of nanotechnology in all areas of life in order to create better, stronger, and more efficient results. In his latest and most perhaps most brilliant work, one of the greatest Kabbalists of our time demystifies the connection between the ancient wisdom of Kabbalah and current scientific thought and shows how the union of the two will bring about the end of chaos in the foreseeable future. David, the end of chaos? Because science and, and the spiritual truths are one and because we've got control over our destinies and our world? Let me share with you an ex let me share with you an example. Please you know? do. So this thing called COVID suddenly came out of nowhere and really uh, kind of shook the boat of the world all in a, in a unified way where there was so much confusion, uncertainty, and uh, all the people that had good life suddenly had to uh, find themselves really dealing with, uh, with things that they never thought they would have to deal uh, on so many levels, on the business level, uh, spending time with family they didn't used to. They had to face, uh, things about themselves that they never faced yeah and people that were cons you know could be very successful and very strong uh, it it might have caused them a lot a lot of insecurity and uncertainty of the future arousing fears that were there dormant in their life and can you imagine nobody nobody could have imagined that something like that would happen but it did happen and the test for every human being is can he really take those facts and look at them as as a reality and look at it as, as like the complete truth or can he create mind over matter so some people were rebuilding their business immediately and were able really to adjust to the new world. Some people uh, started to learn that they will need to deal more with the family life. And some people didn't even able to cope with that and went into antidepressive cannabis and so on and so on. So we are capable, we are the one that are truly the decision makers of our life. Yeah, and the slide that you're showing to me right now, the coronavirus showing the whole world how weak and vulnerable humans are in the face of nature. It is a lesson in humility. Nothing, nature happens by chance. Absolutely. So we needed that lesson, but we need the lesson that our strength is coming from our consciousness, not because uh, we will be able to gain some power, some position or, or enough of a, a lot of uh, 
money. But how does money. how does coming to this realization change things for you? I tell you the truth. For me, it didn't make any difference. It didn't make me any. You know, I, I live exactly the same life. Um, but for us, is a spiritual movement. It kind of uh, open open us to to many people to start asking questions. So explain this to me. That there is no evil. There is help from the opposite. What do you want? What do you, what do you, what do you what are you saying by that? So, you know, we always have two voices in, in our life, yeah? There is the voice that tells us, go ahead, do it. Jump on the unknown. Do something significant. Uh, and there is another voice that tells us, you know why? It's impossible to do that. You know? There are so many things that not going. It's not logic. I'm not capable. I'm not deserved. There is constant two voices in our life. Why? Why we were created like that? And what determines someone greatness if he's able to understand that this voice is just challenging him to become his best? It's not the real enemy. It's not an enemy. It's just challenging you to become your best. Yeah, it's like, you know, in uh, as we said before, in every sports, you have this person that's going to try to challenge and challenge your limits. And it's either you've been defeated by it, or either you make the impossible possible. Yeah? Abundance reaches everyone when society becomes as a single family? What do you mean by that? Yeah, you, you're taking some slides that not belonging to our center, but I, I can uh, I, I can uh, direct you towards it. It's, it, you know, to understand really that we are in one boat, all humanity, you know? And like if someone, there is a very famous story in the Zora, the Talts, about a person that drills a hole in his side of, of, the, of the boat. So someone is coming to him and tell him, why, why are you drilling a hole in the, in the boat? Uh, he said, yeah, what do you care? This is my, my seat, I, I bought a ticket. What do you care? Say, yeah, but we all gonna drown. So there is an interconnection between all of us is humanity and it's something that we 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 are fragmented in seeing you know it's hard for us to see someone from a, from a different uh, a nation or from a different religion but we are all interconnected it means that as long as someone is suffering in, uh, in china that energy is going to ripple effect and come to our neighborhood eventually Everything is interconnected. Pretty Everything much. is interconnected. Mm. We're chatting tonight uh, with David Zakin about Kabbalah. We're going to take a break and come back with some concluding comments in just a minute. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour. Interesting conversation tonight with David Zakin about Kabbalah, which is uh, um, oh, Ancient wisdom, uh, maybe uh, a part of the Jewish faith, maybe uh, Jewish mysticism, maybe uh, something that Madonna has uh, made popular, maybe. I'm not sure, but it's something that's interesting. And David uh, uh, Zakin, who has joined us, who runs the Kabbalah Center in Toronto, has been sharing us with us some, some secrets of Kabbalah. David, what are you trying to achieve? What, like, what is it that you want to do with the Kabbalah Center and your involvement in, uh, in Kabbalah? So, as you know, we are an international, we are an international center that been uh, disseminating this wisdom for the past hundred years throughout the world. And we publish books uh, in tens of languages. And uh, our true purpose is to, to bring kind of an alternative way to look at life that 
according to the wisdom, the moment we are opening ourselves to more data and to the unknown secrets of life, it might allow us to have more control over our destiny and allow us eventually to find true purpose and to fulfill what we came to this world to be. And that's true education. It's simple as education. Uh, of course, it's a it's alternative. Through what? It's through knowing that we have more control over our lives. It's through, it's through what? It's, it's through understanding um, how things works pretty much, you know? We have to understand how things works. It means that uh, the reason why we are living, it's not random. There is a thought behind it. There is a purpose behind it. The parents that we have, we are there for a reason. The wife, the people, our bosses. Everything uh, in our life has meaning and we need to learn to connect those dots and to be curious about life and not ex accept things as is. We have to raise more of the question why things the way they are, whatever it is. And when we enough, when we doing it enough times asking why, uh, we might uh, get different answers that what our teachers in school gave us maybe david, deeper than that david if people want to check you out or check uh, um uh, kabbalah out how do they do that so they can go to kabbalah.com uh, we have an enormous enormous uh, website there with the thousands of articles and the videos you can log in and we are locally have a presence here and a bookstore here on Young and Lawrence in Midtown. And you are welcome to join to call us to the center. Uh, right now, we don't have presential uh, courses in the center here because of the restrictions, but definitely you can find like course, a live course that, uh, uh, that can be for your liking if the beginner course or intermediate course uh, where you can actually you know learn so much on zoom with our best teachers and your own website is the kabbalah center it's called kabbalah.com with the uh, double b l a h exactly as you see here well david zakin thank you so much for joining us tonight and telling us about uh, kabbalah i really appreciate it uh and uh I'm going to uh, read your book with interest, and I'm going to check out uh, one of your uh, your Zoom, uh, one of your uh, your videos, and um, and I'm going to come when you open up, listen to one of your uh, your sessions. Beautiful, beautiful. Maybe after midnight. <laughs> yeah, you're very welcome to. That's David Zick and the head of uh, the Kabbalah Center in Toronto, uh, Kabbalah.com. Um, interesting. Thank you very much, David. Thank you for having me. That's our show for tonight. I'm on every Monday through Friday at six o'clock on 960 on your AM dial, or you can stream me online at www.saga960am.ca or on my podcast and video casts are available after the fact on briancrumby.com, on Facebook, on YouTube, on Audible, uh, on uh, Apple Podcasts, on anywhere where you get uh, your podcasts. Thanks so much for joining me. Good night, everybody. Good night, David. Thanks so much. Thank you.